want you to put your hands together. There goes the neighborhood. And welcome him to the stage. Big round of applause. There goes the neighborhood. All right. Welcome back to the Smoke Screen Podcast, episode back. 22. I'm your co host, Ron Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ron. I like you, man, but it was time. He's out of here. Um, it was time. It was time. Um, anyway, not to get into sports and uh, football and our horrible situation here in Carolina, uh, but we did a thing. We really did. We guys. did a thing uh, tonight uh, for this podcast and uh, probably for uh, probably my new hobby. Yeah, future I really, podcast you'll probably hear about this. Yes, I think this is my new hobby. So, this is something I heard about a long time ago. I actually used to be into gold prospecting, and I think I mentioned that a couple of times. You have? And I did that for many, many years, up until a few years back. And then, uh, actually, a couple months ago, we I did it one time with my cousin. I took him up to Uori. We did some gold panning. I kind of showed him how it worked and whatever. But anyway, the reason I bring that up is because we – went out and did some geocaching. This is something, again, I've heard about it for a long time, but I never really, and I kind of knew, I think, what it was, but I never really looked into it much. And then we're sitting there talking about doing this podcast. The last couple of weeks, by the way, we apologize. We just want to put out good shit, and there was always a scheduling problem, or there was a, you know, we watched a couple of documentaries. Well, yeah, we do our homework. Oh, absolutely. And then... We would do everything to prepare, but the content just wasn't worthy. No, it was it was like a 10-minute conversation. It's like that was about it. So it wasn't really – we just don't want to put it shit out there that's not worthy of a conversation. And we would, we would get here and we would go, okay, that – you know, what we put those few days into is not going to work. What can we do real quick? And then we're like, no, nah, let's not do that. Let's not. Yeah, yeah. It's not natural uh, right. it, because we like to just come off the hip with something we both watched or experienced or whatever or something we have experience with. And so anyway, just we, we, you know, we're not going to just put it out to put it out um, and, and this be, you know, garbage. But anyway, this was fun. This was different. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we we're talking about doing this podcast earlier, and um, I don't know how we got on the subject. We were we were watching looking at geological formations oh, in North yes, Carolina. Yes, we were looking at because you know, we were talking about there's a <laughs> an area nearby that you, there's big giant rocks everywhere. And I used to talk. Uh, that's what I said. I said I used to go check out those areas because that's where usually gold is when you find bigger rocks. Mm-hmm. That's where you go gold panning and stuff. And that brought up geocaching. And I think you put a video up. Yeah, just a random video. A random video from YouTube uh, about geocaching and. Lo and behold, there's an app from geocaching.com. I believe that's the name of it. It is. Um, and I downloaded the app, and it has all these places. And, uh, okay, Let James, you, you explain. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, you explain exactly what geocaching is. Yeah, yeah. Ge- uh, geocaching, it says, is the recreational activity of hunting for and finding a hidden object by means of GPS coordinates posted on a website. And... Um, and you know it's using the word cache and and that word uh, dictionary.com says a cache is a hiding place especially one in the ground for ammunition food or treasures etc you've always heard of like a guns cache yeah, and so things weapons like cache. weapons cache yeah, exactly. yeah things of like um, items jewelry things like that you yeah so that in word. the modern era think about and I told James while we because we went and actually did this we're going to get into that in a few minutes we, yeah. we went and actually did this um yeah, there were some maybe some cops involved. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so think about uh, for Pokemon Go for for adults. I yeah, mean, seriously, good way to the way you use the app now these it, days it feels because you don't have to have a separate Garmin device or something. Now you have your smartphone and an app, and it leads you to these places, and then you look for these uh, little caches. And then in our case, we we went to four, and these there's different sizes. This were these were called micros, and we had one small. And they range from micro to large and then unknown. And so, um, Correction, we went to five. Uh, we're, right, we did. We, we found did. four out of five. We found four out of five. One was not there, obviously. <laughs> right. 
But anyway, yeah, this is actually an old, uh, uh, this has been going on for quite a while. I mean, I think we found one from 2010. We did. So these are little things. It's, uh, if you, if some people may be familiar with, there's little rock clubs around. Because uh, my mom was, when she moved to the beach, she um, found this rock randomly one time. And it was had a uh, you know, painted rock. So somebody takes a rock and they paint it like something or whatever. And on the bottom it said, um, whatever dot com. It was a Facebook group or whatever is what it was. Yeah. And she went and looked at that Facebook group, and that's what it is. You hide these little cute rocks everywhere, and people find them, take pictures, and put them back. And then they go to the Facebook page that's on the back of the rock, and they, you know, put their post their picture. It's just a fun little thing. So this is literally a treasure hunt. It is. In real life. I mean, you know, little trinkets are in there. Um, or obviously we've looked into some videos now and there's some bigger things out there and you can trade up and leave your own little calling card or whatever. And then the main thing is, is you log it, you sign an actual log. That that is the main thing to me. Yes. Cause you know, you put your fingerprints on it saying, I have healed this. I found this. I've held it. And, uh, you see the names of all the people who've been here before. We found one today, tonight that had uh, two pages because the first page was slammed full of yes. people who had found it. And it's just it's just a really neat act do- outdoor activity. It really is. And I, and I think it would be really good for families and kids especially because some of these trinkets are like little toys yeah. and little, you know, collectibles. And you can trade up. You can put something in there and replace it if you want to. Uh, the ones we found were really tiny for the most part. They had little homemade, like handmade bracelets. Yeah, little. Pins. I think that was their little calling card. And then the the small one we found had like a smooth polished rock. Yeah, like that you would buy like at a store in the mountains. Um, um, and then it had the little pin. I believe it was From Ohio. A, Ohio, right? Yeah. The other cool thing is there's what's called trackables. And so there's an official thing for this, and it's that geocaching.com. And so you can get like these stickers to mark your boxes if you plant one yourself, and you can get these little log books and all this little cool stuff. And the, I forgot what I was going to say. The trackables. The trackables, yep. yes. So the trackables are something, let's say I want to take my little trinket and have it go to a certain location. So I think we watched a video in the case of one was a guy had a little uh, crab toy like thing and he wanted it to get to the ocean. Yes. So you put a tracking code on this thing and you drop it in a cache. Somebody finds it and logs it as a trackable. They take it and move it to a different cache a little bit closer to the location. Yes. It may only be you know a couple miles away. But eventually, but it's in that general direction. It's in that general direction, and because you see all these little on this little you know app you get or whatever, you see all these little caches on the map, so you know where they are, the general areas, and then you go to find them, and there's little clues and hints and stuff like that. So it gets closer and closer to its location. I think another one was uh, was it a Disney character? Yeah, well, there was a Snoopy. Yeah, Snoopy, and, and he had a little Snoopy toy, and he wanted to get to the original home of Snoopy. And where these big statues are. Yeah, and so it ended up, being, it ended up going across the country, and somebody found it, took a picture with it on the statue. Yes. So it's really, really cool. I mean, there's lots of different aspects to it, but the bottom line is is you're going out in a real-life treasure hunt. Yeah, some are in, like, uh, you know, really urban crowded areas right out in the middle of a place like at a shopping center that you've you've walked past hundreds of times in your life literally the ones we found tonight i've driven past those things i've probably been within 10 feet of some of these absolutely had no idea they were there right and they could be like just a tiny um empty pill bottle that somebody has hidden like say under the skirt of a light post in the middle of a walmart parking lot and you pull it out, you open the, you find it, you open the pill bottle, and inside there is like the little trinkets he was talking about and the little log paper rolled up in there. Um, so it's it's super cool to, to see these things in these kind of places where you go all the time. And one um, we found was in a more rural area out by a bridge, and I thought that was really cool. 
and they get more and more rural, and they have levels of, you know, how hard is it to find? Yes. Um, they're rated on there. So, like, if you don't feel like going, like, for a literal hike through the woods, right, right. you pick the easy ones. But if you're yeah. feeling adventurous that day, you can log on and go find some really tough ones out in the middle of a, a hiking trail under a log or something or in a tree. Right, and that, that's what's cool. So you have, uh, you have a rating on, I think it's just one through five, easy to hard on the location, the terrain, um, and all that good stuff. So, like tonight, we obviously we we went out at night. We literally went out at twelve o'clock at night with flashlights, with flashlights, <laughs> like idiots, because we saw this and thought we got to try this. But we want to let's talk about it. But we want to experience it. Yeah. And you know what? It's just a damn for the most part. I mean, you can get all there. There's some really fancy stuff we saw on videos. Oh yeah. But for the most part, you know, they're basically little peel size bottles, peel bottles, whatever. And it, you know. It was crazy to me how fun it was to find that little pill bottle with a nut, with basically a slip of paper in it. This guy where you sign, yeah, and, and in, in our in our case, it, a bracelet. You go on the app and you hit found it, and it puts it replaces the pen that was there with a little smiley face. Now, one of the ones we found was put there by like a little scout troop. Yes. So I'm sure those scout troops like to go on there and see how many people have found the little geocache that right. they hit. So the app logs all this stuff and then you, you know, when you create log in with a profile, you know, it's a, you know, two minute process. You verify an email and then there's there's you and your name. You can contact other people on there. Now we're not promoting the app. We don't get it's, this. Is not an ad. Right, this is just no. something we came across. There is free for the most part. You can upgrade the app, I believe, for more premium features. For example, instead of just like the simple, small, regular caches, you can do some different versions on the premium where you can like the premium only. So, um, for example, there was a multi cache. Uh, and that was one where it's not just one location, but it was like you find one that may lead, gives you a clue to another one, which is right up our alley. So yeah, two or more. So it's more of a treasure hunt where you find multiple clues for one thing. Another cool feature about uh, paying for the app that I thought was really cool was we were, you know, Chris and I were talking about possibly going to Uwari where we've mentioned you know gold panning and camping and things like that before. Well, Chris was like, well, hey, you don't have sales signal out there. Right, right. But he noticed on the, the pay version, you know, you could download apps, you know, that you could use offline. I mean, maps that you could use offline. Yeah, so you can download the map and everything to use offline in case you don't have a signal on your phone. That so you have genius. It. I think. Exactly. So, yeah, so back to the types, you have, um, the you know, the simple plain ones like we're talking about, the ones, and then you have um, the different types are – I guess traditional is what we're talking about. Then you have the multicast that I mentioned. You have the mystery ones. The mystery ones is described as it may involve solving a puzzle to reveal the coordinates where the geocache is hidden. And then you read the details for more information. And the details are always, there's always a, like a little tab in the app to read like the and, and details. And there's also a hint button if you need a hint. So if you're having trouble, you can click hint and whatever the, the guy who planted it you know, the original cacher yeah. put in there as a hint. You get to see that. You also have what's called earth cache. This apparently is more, instead of an actual container, it's more of a, a geological feature. So for example, I find a awesome cave or a mining old mine entrance out in Uori. I can mark that as a geocache and put it on the website and log it and people can go find it. Yeah. So it's more of a, you know, sightseeing venture right. type thing. Yeah, what's called a letterbox. Um, this uses um, says it uses clues instead of exact coordinates, so it's more of a clue based thing to find. Whatever that would make it harder since you don't have the exact coordinates. Exactly. So you don't have like a pin. You have a general area, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but then, I guess you would read your instructions to where to go. Right. Uh, virtual. This is not a physical thing, but when you when you go to this geocache, you may be asked to take a photo or answer a question, something to prove you were there. Right. So it's not even a real thing. And then they've gotten so tech savvy these days. I love this. They one. have the webcam version where you need to be captured on a public webcam in order to log it. To so prove that to you. To prove that you were there. Yeah. And that's cool. So somebody out there has actual live cam set up for some of these places. And then finally you have the where go, I believe it's called. And this is like a an actual device, GPS enabled device 
So you need a, a where go enable GPS device or app to interact with the actual cache itself. So this is something electronic that your phone, for example, could actually pick up. So it's really cool on the on the service level. It's just a treasure hunt, but there's all kinds of cool twists and turns that you can apparently go through. And what was the the term that they used for the people who mess with your geocache or? Uh, yeah, they, I keep, they see they got it from Harry Potter. Yeah, I keep wanting to say uh, uh, Tribble, tri- like in the. And I'm wanting to say like Wuggle or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like. It's, what uh, is it? There? Hold on. I'll, actually, I'll pull one up. I'll pull one up that we found because um, you can, you know, because it, it's in the comments a lot. Like, watch out for those. Uh, let's see, like this one. We're, we'll tell you about what we found and what's our little story here in a second. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, here's one. Muggles. Muggles. So muggles are people that are, I guess, the assholes who come across geocaching and they either just straight up steal the thing yeah. or take everything out of it if there's stuff in it or they just do shit to it or to mess with you. Yeah, tamper with it, tamper move with it, it move it's it. Aggravating. So it's, you know, you're it's just it's trolls. So they It's another word for troll. Yeah, some of these little uh some of these videos we watch say, you know, they kind of give you like um geocaching etiquette or rules and it says, you know, don't if there are people around watching you that can see you, don't open the cache or find it, pull it out in front of them. Right. Wait till they're not looking because they might be a muggle. That's right. You know? And then, like, for example, this one, and this is one we'll have the the little story about. Uh, the comment is, and the, the name of this cache was Off Your Rocker, and that was because of the location. And it says right there in the comments, bring your own pen and pencil because you – you want to write on this little log and they're too small to fit pins for the small ones. Anyway, they're too small for pins and whatever. So there's these little rolls typically. And apparently there's also little official log books you can buy from the website, you know, or whatever. But anyway, you bring your own pen so you can sign it. But this one says, and watch out for all those muggles. So this is a common thing, obviously. Um, It's just crazy. There's a troll in every damn, everything you do in life, there's trolls. And whether it's online, but now you go back to the real world. Well, this is something you can take your phone and literally go out in the real world to find actual things that are, you know, some are just cheesy little toys and trinkets, sure. but it's really cool. It is super cool. And again, like I said before, it's an outdoor activity that takes walking and thinking and you know, you're not plugged into the matrix so yes, much. Yes, exactly. Know? I, even though you are using your phone. You are, you, you are. Know? But like but, you said, but when you go to a place for, like tonight, we just went out here locally. I mean, we were surprised at how many are right here. Yes. I mean, we went we went to basically a couple parking lots. Yep. And, you know, but when you go out to, say, Uwari, like we're talking about, which is, a, you know, the oldest mountain range in North Carolina. It's about 40 minutes from here. I used to go, I go camping there all the time. There's a million there. And so you couldn't, there's no signal out there. I can tell you that from experience. Once you get out away from the main campgrounds, because you can camp anywhere in you or you won't. Um, it's a national forest. There's no cell signals. So that's where you'd want to like upgrade for $30 for the whole year. So you can still download or see the locations without being having a signal. Yeah. Otherwise, you would need a Garmin you would have, or right. a TomTom or something and use coordinates. And like anything, like any hobby, there's people we've already seen on these videos that take this way seriously. Yes. And they have all their little tool. They have a kit. They have a basically a, a geocaching kit. So that may be a little rolling thing to roll up the little tight, you know, little paper logs uh, yes. back into these little tiny containers. One of them was a little magnetic arm to grab yeah. things. So some are magnetic. So it's not just like a pill bottle, you know, in a hole. Yeah. It can be in a tree can be under a rock under a fake rock we've seen on videos yes. there's all kinds of cool places and yeah they have like telescoping uh, mirrors and um gloves they wear you have to have a flashlight i mean just it's cool little stuff you know i mean um call it nerdy if you will but it's super fun and super cool. We've all we all love scavenger hunts and yeah. I mean, if you even if you Easter like egg hunts as a kid, right? I mean, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. If you if you think about movies like National Treasure, yes, um, you know, there's always some, there's something about a puzzle, and this this is right up my alley because I love puzzles. I love treasure hunts. We have a mutual friend who every Halloween 
puts on a what's called the treasure hunt. Yeah. And it's a one night thing that lasts all night long, as long as it takes. And you find this giant treasure, an actual treasure chest of candy. Yeah. And he hides it out on what is it, fifteen acres? Yep. It's like fifteen, sixteen acres of land. And every year there's a theme. And yeah. it's really, really cool to do. And it's out. You, you go out there at like 7, 8 o'clock. You eat. They yeah. feed everybody. And then you go out in the woods. Sometimes it takes them at least a minimum a month to put these things together. It's so big. Yeah, it's so planned out and detailed as far as the clues. You have, you may have two teams one year. You may have four teams. And you all have to have these different clues because you have a color or a team name or whatever. So you can't, like, take the other clues. But anyway, the point is it's really intricate and it's fun Everybody seems to love a treasure hunt, and All I do. Ages. Yeah, and that's why things like I think Pokemon Go is a virtual thing, but you have to travel around to find these little b- bastards. It's super. It's super fun. So anyway, and, and honestly, um, you know, back to the one you said. What did you say? Off your rocker. Off your rocker was the name. Yeah, because like if apparently, and we're going to do this. We're going to try this. We're going to put some out and oh, register yes. them on the website and everything um, because. I download the app, and I'm sure I'll end up upgrading it at some point. I haven't yet, but um, this one was called "Yeah, Off Your Rocker." So whatever you're doing, you can name it based off the surroundings, or you know something, something cool or clever or whatever. I'm, right. I'm assuming. So you you picture off your rocker rocking chairs. Where would you find a bunch of rocking chairs in a city? In a city, mind you, we're not because yeah. we're not. You know, we did obviously this is not that we didn't go out in the woods. Uh, we went to one pretty remote location last yes but we went to the you know the close ones just to check it out and yeah. uh yeah so where do you find rocking chairs in a city yep well probably a restaurant named cracker barrel <laughs> cracker barrel <laughs> so which is known for its front porch and its rocking chairs and you know i'm thinking now <laughs> it's, how it's, perfect a setup is that for muggles to just chill in a rocking chair and watch people come look for this thing yes um, so Chris and I, now it is like in the thirties here, which is pretty cold for Carolina, North Carolina. Yeah. We of course, of course we pick it, you know, 1230 at night and yes. it's 30 degrees outside. Toboggans, hoodies. We find ourselves on the front porch of Cracker Barrel looking, uh, laying down on the ground, looking under the checkerboard, looking under rocking chairs, the bench. The benches, the, under the trash cans, the damn, you know, little vent <laughs> things. I mean, you name it. We were looking. And it's just an open area with, you know, rocking chairs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it all it well is. It was well lit. It was, it was super cool, we thought, until <laughs> two cop cars roll up. Of course. From each direction. And, and I told you this was going to happen when you, we left. You called it. You called it. And I didn't think about how we looked. You know, I'm out there looking like the Unabomber. <laughs> and I got Laying it. down with a flashlight. And I looked like the, the literal robber because I had on, yes. you know, black sweatpants, black hoodie, and, yes. and a toboggan, black toboggan with black shoes, like, a, you know, the actual robber you would see in a fucking cartoon. And we're in your blacked out car. <laughs> with the German Shepherd hanging out the hanging back. Hanging out the back window. <laughs> I mean, we, you know... we. We thought about it, but we didn't think about it. Right. And so we were too <laughs> amped about this. This was so fun. We had already nailed three. We knocked out three geocaches in about the first half hour. Yes. And then we find ourselves there, and it was taking a little longer than normal. You could see the lady inside the window at Cracker Barrel, and they're mopping and cleaning and everything. And um, so I was surprised there, to see them still there. I was, too, at that there time. There was two or night. three people still in there cleaning. Yeah. I'm like, damn. So we just... Went about it like normal. They were looking out and saw us, and I just said, Yeah, well, no. we weren't tiptoeing, acting no, creepy no, or anything. No. So, yeah, so we're looking, and by the time we had been there probably 10, 15 minutes, I'm guessing, probably yep. 15, The we, we actually we couldn't find it, so we're thinking it's probably gone or something. So we actually hit the clue button. And yes. the clue button said magnetic, but it said it backwards. Yes, the clue was written backwards. The clue was written backwards and said magnetic. So we're thinking, okay, anything metal here, that's what we got to check. And I mean, because you basically have a pinpoint on your little map on the app of where this thing is. Yeah. And so obviously you're looking for something metal. It's we're think, I'm thinking like it's a little key box where it's got a magnet on it and it's something small. And the first three worked perfectly. Yes. We would line up to the, we would get, to where the point lined up, you know, with our GPS, you know, dot where our car was at. And we would get out, look around for like two minutes, and we'd find them. Right. 
I mean, in, in those cases, there, granted, they were pretty much the only place, the only thing you could see was near your car. Yeah, they weren't as cluttered as yeah, the wasn't as cluttered, exactly. front porch of a Cracker Barrel. So I'm laying there at this time. We had already looked several times, and I'm back at this big metal old thing. Like, I'm, a, I'm, wash, was, so like a, a manual old, washing machine. I think it was an old wash tub, yeah. exactly, because it had the rollers up top. Right. Big steel wash tub, but, you know, they have these old-timey stuff on the porch. I'm laying down looking at the bottom of it, thinking there's a magnet thing stuck up in the bottom. You know what I mean? And, and here comes... And I'm looking up behind everything up high, and we hear voices. <laughs> and I saw the Popo car, and I'm like, I told you. So we had a guy come up, uh, one uh, cop, hey, guys. You know, I'm like, hey, how are you? And then another guy from the other direction, a different car. Yes. And I told this officer, I'm like, look, we're I know we're just, we're actually looking for a treasure it's called geocaching i have my phone in my hand i show him the app the he other didn't guy believe wa- a word of he it did, yeah he has he's like looking at me like i'm crazy yes the other guy walks up and he says i and i think was it you or i'm not sure exactly yeah we were telling from a distance yeah because he was still up. walking towards yes. us and it said uh we're actually geocaching. We're going to talk. We want. To, we do a podcast, and we want to want to come out here and experience what it is before we talked about it. And we're and we're geocaching. And he says, "Oh, I geocache all the time." Now I thought he was just being a smartass, right? But then he literally says, "Watch out for muggles." The muggles. He sure as hell did. So he knew the terminology. I'm like, "Wait a minute, are you serious?" Yes. This motherfucker <laughs> happened to be the cop. They had been geocaching and had the app on his phone. Right. And they literally, after taking our names and calling us in, they actually did yeah, that. Yeah, they took my ID. Took your ID. Yeah. I said, mine's in my car right over there. It's running. As you can see, the lights are on. I said, I can go get it. The other officer said, that's okay. Just give me your name and birth date. He wrote it down on his little pad, like uh, like in a movie. He calls it in on his radio. He calls your license in after you hand him that. The other guy starts looking. Yes, he, <laughs> he, start, immediately, he, he immediately. Well, no, he goes and talks to the manager. Yes, and he like s- clears the air. We thought he's like, "Oh, this is just a cool thing. It's like a scavenger hunt," and you know, this is why the other cops calling in our info. So then, as soon as the manager goes back in and shuts the door, he's got his flashlight. He's looking just like we are, and, and he's coming up like, "What's the clue again?" Yes. And let me see your phone, and let me you know, let me look at the map. Can you zoom in anymore? <laughs> These dudes didn't have nothing better to do tonight. And this other guy's looking at us like we're crazy. Yeah, he was annoyed that the the other cop was helping us. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he did, he wasn't an asshole. He, he never was, he, said anything. He was out of cool. Line. He was really quiet. But he didn't actually. say anything. Yeah, yeah. That, he didn't say what much. Made me feel like he was ready to roll. Because a couple of times I said, "I'm sorry to get y'all out here and whatever." And he was like, "Nah, you're cool, man." But he was cool. But he was just like, you could tell he was like, "What the fuck are these damn white boys doing out here?" Yeah. I mean, anyway, and the cop that was helping us look. I mean, he was like making me. Look in places I'd already looked. Yeah, right. Lay back down there. Look under yeah, that beach. Well, check under there. If you don't check real good, you know. Um, so, anyway. So, I got candy bars falling out of my pockets and stuff. Yeah. And gum while I'm laying on the ground. It was so funny. What so, a good experience. It was. It was really cool that we actually, that the, the, one of the cops that actually showed up on this. I'm, I'm a, she, the lady said that the manager, the general manager, called from home. Yes, yeah, she watches the cameras because there apparently home. there's cameras and can see them from home. I don't know if I necessarily buy all that, but anyway, with it, however it happened, so they, you know, they finally come out, I guess, and after the cops have, and are and are hanging out with us for ten minutes and walking around I think looking, it annoyed them. That, I think it did too that we were. You know, the cops were cool with us. I think it did, too. Hanging out with us, Like, they're supposed to, like, you know, pat us down and haul us off or something. Oh, I have to say, because you pulled up the description of this geocache, and you said, this clearly says this geocache was placed with consent from the manager. Right. So, because it's on private property at a restaurant on this front porch, it was... Apparently, according to the notes, it was placed there with the permission of the manager. Now, this could have been... Ten years ago, I didn't see the date on this. One. Right. So, or it could have been five years ago. I don't know. We have and so no that idea. manager may not work there anymore. She acted clueless. Yeah, she had no idea what we were talking about. She actually acted offended because I think she thought, okay, I got to run these bozos off. Then she looks back out the window and sees the cop down on his knees looking under stuff with a right. flashlight. <laughs> right. He's damn bound and determined not he, to let this thing whip him either. He is. He's got back into the groove. That was so hilarious. So I go get back in the car, 
and he calls Chris over to the <laughs> to the cop car. And Chris, you said he's showing you his phone, and he's got the app. He's on got there. the app on his phone. He pulls it out, and says, "Is this the app you're using?" I'm like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> So him and his wife, I guess, I think he had said his wife, or he said us. Yeah. He said we used to do it all the time. Right. Because he is the one who described it to the other cop after we did again, and the manager that came out. But you said, I didn't hear this, but apparently when I was looking around the other corner oh, again, yeah, that manager. she said something to the effect of, I'm not leaving until they are. Yes, that's what she said. I'm not leaving until they are. So eventually, a so quiet she, cop came back and said, y'all got to go. Yeah, so I saw him talking to her again. So apparently she came back out, talked to him and said, look, we're trying to get out of here, but I'm not leaving until they are. And then that's when he said, and, look, he, she's asking y'all to go ahead and leave. And she said that the general manager is calling that website and having this thing removed. Well, yeah, but uh, it's already removed. Right. But yes, we didn't it, find it. It's, it's yeah, not it, there. it's not there. Somebody is taking it, or it it could. There's a possibility that it's inside, That's right across the. But if I, anything, it's inside. I don't think it makes any sense to put it inside. Cause well, you, there is stuff hung on the walls that are never going to be. There moved. is, but you would have to go in and eat oh, there. Oh yeah, and you or and you can't get or that table. Somebody, yeah, you would have to say excuse table. me, and, and you, I don't think they would put it inside. Good so point. I think it's gone. Yeah, the, 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 that big metal wash thing was the obvious place, and the, we checked every metal thing there could be. I even was in the little like the flower beds out there, thinking there may be like a sprinkler head, that <laughs> something could be attached to. No, it, that thing's gone. So I yeah. marked it, did not find, and put a thing on it. Maybe that it's taken by a muggle. <laughs> I got a, de- I got a decent picture of you and the cop in front of his car, looking at your. Yeah, phones. that's probably probably going to be the thumbnail. I of think this that video, would be pretty I cool. Think. Um, I mean. We did get, you know, we did get the cops called on us. It was kind, of, it was kind of funny. Now we're don't tase me, bro. Yeah, I, but I, I told you, I knew it. That was so funny. And then we were like, okay, we leave there, and let's like, let's get one more before we go back and record. Let's go one more. We pulled up one cemetery in the country. I'm like, nope, not tonight. We're gonna get shot. And there, you couldn't have drugged me there. I mean, yeah, we yeah. got to go to do that in the daylight. Yeah, it's not just a cemetery thing, but you're having to pull off a private road on the dirt road in the country. Yeah. And well, they're going to see boys with We have our own reasons. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know everybody that lives here. There's no, they're coming out with guns. Um, <laughs> and it don't matter if I have one or not. This not that's not the point. You see flashlights outside at night in the country. That ain't, don't go. Yeah. <laughs> Just stay away. And I'm not down with Wuggle Ghost or Muggle Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, of course. I wouldn't even worry about the cemetery part. I was worried about the walking and getting, you know, shot. But anyway, so we found another one uh, on the way uh, back, actually close to the place I'll be moving when we have this new studio eventually, by the way, that we keep mentioning. Yeah, it was right there um, at the new place. And really quickly, thank you guys, guys on Patreon. I forgot to say it at the beginning again. Uh, really appreciate the continued support. Uh, we will be adding video soon, and we're going to be vlogging some of these things, I think. Amen. Uh, I don't know how I we do that or idea. where to put that or whatever. Maybe it's a Patreon-only thing. I don't know. But uh, because, you know, we're going to be at – but when we get to the new house, uh, we're going to be adding cameras and everything. So we, all, I've already looked into everything we need yesterday, as a matter of fact, again. Um, but, yeah, thank, thank Joe Rogan style. We keep saying that, but for anybody new, right. that's what we're talking about. And, and this is a good idea for maybe our first geocache. Use the coordinates of where your house is going to be built. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> and that's then a, when you start breaking ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put it under the, <laughs> under the, under the crawl under, space. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, could you imagine? We're hard up trying to find any way to make new friends. Uh, that may, you know what? I might do that. Actually, that's not a bad idea, you know, because we, you know, there's some, there's some not ladies doing this. Yeah, we saw videos. Yeah, pretty. So I could do one in my front yard on the front porch in the new house, and we'll just see who comes up. Dude, love it. I might do it. Hey. I mean, because you can always take it off, right? Yeah. Yes, so, that's yeah. right. So you could do it and just see who pulls up at your driveway. I love it. That's the way to meet people. And we, uh, the last one we did was. Um, out there right close to there anyway yeah so it was pretty close we went by it was near the the baseball stadium yeah uh, where our local double a team plays Uh, is it double a they're about to move uptown but i don't remember the terminators yeah i think they're double a right single or double anyway so yeah local 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 um 
minor league baseball team and uh it was more of a little country road to the stadium and uh it was pretty cool it was a little bridge and then a little guardrail and there was a little pill bottle in there. And this was labeled as small. So it was a little bit bigger than the other ones. Yep. So it was a big bottle. Mm-hmm. And there was enough room in there for that little polished rock and that little pen and then the paper. And there's plenty more room in there. So James put a kind of a rustic looking coin in there. Yes. <laughs> and, and Chris's note when he found it said, left a Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that tells you what denomination of coin I yeah, left. Yeah, but it was a it, it was a, a unique looking coin. Yeah, it was. Uh, anyway, but the point yeah. is, we you know, and I actually t- I took out, but because we watched a couple of these videos before we left, I took a couple old poker chips. Yes. To in case that we found something big enough to swap or and leave I or think, whatever. So that, I, but I ne- there was nothing big enough for me to put that in. No. And um, I also want to say, yeah, once we came back. We had looked. We looked at some other videos because um, I mean, this is just this is really cool to me. It really I is. Mean, uh, it sounds cheesy, but it really is cool when it you start is looking at the. Super cool to be out there with flashlights and looking for stuff. And if you knew Chris and I, I mean, Chris and I, we used to, you know, even when we first started hanging out together, we would send these codes for each other to crack back and forth over email before you know we were texting and stuff. I mean, that was we we love puzzles and and sex scavenger. Yeah, hunt type I mean things. that was that's always been my type of thing is and, is codes and puzzles and scavenger hunts. And I've always like you know we talked about the the scavenger hunt at Halloween. I've always loved that because this is literally fifteen acres of woods, mm-hmm. and you're out with flashlights in the middle of the night. You might be out here at three or four in the morning. Yeah, um, it's cold. Yeah, people drop off like flies because you walk yeah. so much. Yeah, you're you're walking a long ways, and you're finding these clues in the middle of the woods at night with flashlights. There's no lights except for like in the center areas where the yards are, you know, because it's a big family farm basically is what it is with multiple houses. Yeah, and they'll have like a, a central meeting place with a bonfire right, usually. Right, right. Somebody's at the bonfire. One year the fucking treasure was under the fire. Under the bonfire. And I mean a big How ass cool fire. Is that? Yeah, so you had to come back and find it, and they put the fire out and dug the son bitch up. One year it was like twenty feet up in the tree. Exactly, that was cool too. Um, but yeah, we were looking at videos, and and there was people showing ones they found, and I thought this was there was a cool one. It was a cactus, um, and it was kind of in you know where you wouldn't you didn't see other cactuses around, so it kind of stood out a little bit. Out. But if you first glance you're not thinking you about it. You walk right past it and say, Oh, cool cactus. But if you you know, mess with the dirt and rocks around it, you pull it up and there's like a three foot piece of P V C pipe underneath it, straight down in a hole that people took the time to go do this and put it out there to make a geocache out of it. Right. And that's the kind of stuff Chris and I want to do. So, yeah, vlogging this stuff or whatever, you know, it's yeah. going to be fun. I look forward to this I think it would be a stuff. cool little, you know, because there's it's not normal thing for the Smokescreen channel. We could just do a Patreon-only stuff mm-hmm. for that maybe. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But that would be fun to do. It would be fun to, to vlog and actually see us out here searching for this shit. And, um, but I think it would be cool, you know, to maybe, you know, get some new viewers, uh, people who are into geocaching. Oh, oh yeah, get yeah. Turned on the smoke screen, and they they, they could be fans of the yeah. Uh, it, it just, stuff it, you it, do. at this point, yeah. It did, at this point, it don't matter anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not worried about any, anything being different, and that's not like it's going to hurt the channel <laughs> in some way. So yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about that at all. But I think it's really cool. I think um, I don't know. It'd be it would be a lot easier for that though to have a third person as a cameraman. Yeah, you know, because you're walking around moving shit. I mean, a little or, bit of both. Or um uh you know, GoPros or something like that. Yeah, on our that's heads a good idea. or something. That would Yeah, cool. it wouldn't be a bad idea. We're out there with fucking helmets. Yeah. We, we're going to be the, I'm we're going to be the, we're going to be the nerds because I told James like any kind of like you like here's the thing. When you get into something and a lot of men will identify with this. I yeah. think ladies too in different ways, but I know from personal experience, I know from my dad, if you get into a hobby, you get into a hobby. You're going to see dudes out here with full belts on, with these little tools. Yep, vests. Vests with pockets, with, pockets yep. with their little pins, certain pins. I'm telling you, man. And they, like I said, this website, apparently, I haven't checked out the whole thing yet. You can buy these stickers, these official stickers to put on your boxes or your caches to you know identify it as an official cache. Yeah, you wouldn't want somebody to stumble upon it and not know what it is. 
They, they're not aware right. of what geocaching is. So this big sticker on there, this bright green. Or it orange. Says, yeah. Uh, yeah, geocaching, you know, please don't disturb or please leave it here or put it back where you found it kind right, of thing. Right, right. That's, because that's a good idea. Because there was one guy who had a box on there that he had put in, he had put, I believe, um, camo duct tape all over it. Yes. So he can hide out in the woods, but on the bottom there's a big orange sticker that says official geocache. So when you find that, there's no mistake in once you flip it over I have that to you found the right thing. The, the humorous kind of sick story that the cop told us. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Him and, I think it was his wife, now that I, now that I remember the story. Um, we're, we're geocaching and found one where all the loot was taken out of it and a muggle had taken a dump in the damn geocache box. Uh, yes, so, that's right. So that is... Because he was telling us you might want to start using like latex, latex gloves. gloves. Yes. So and I'm like, God, that would make it even look weirder. We're out here, people are looking out the windows. <laughs> we already got flashlights and toboggans on, look like fucking robbers out of cartoons. <laughs> And now we're adding rubber gloves. Oh my gosh, that's serial killer. I mean, could you, could you imagine? Psh, psh, you know, all right, let's go. <laughs> like bend over. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh gosh. Oh, the next manager that pops out on us, I'm gonna say uh, it puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But or uh, it gets the hose again. <laughs> right. So I can see there's probably a lot of stories like that where cops have been called or whatever because have to be. Like we were even out when we went to the the second one in the middle of Sam's Club parking lot, right? I mean, yeah. it was just a light pole and you slid this little skirt up that are they all look like they're bolted but they're not. No. And you just slide it up a little bit and they, you know, slide this little bottle or or container underneath there. There's there's cleaning crews out there cleaning the parking lot with blowers and all this kind of stuff, and you know they're looking at us like we're crazy. Yeah, like they're out there and with like, flashlights, and um, yeah, like you said, if we would have circled around, they probably went over there, yes, nosing around. I'm sure, and, we it, and the other one where it was closer to the Walmart parking lot was like, you know that that car there was a car sitting there with its lights on, so somebody was just sitting there in their car. You know, I don't know if they got off work or I have no idea. But Wait, waiting on their, um, you know, mistress, it probably yeah. something like that. But you know, when we pull it off because we were so close that they went over there because they saw us pull out this bottle. They were watching, they do. <laughs> and then look at it, sign something, and put it back. <laughs> so they, I'm sure they thought it was a drug deal. They had to. Like this is our drop spot. We're mules. I know. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so there's probably a lot of st even so, a lot of stories like that even during the daylight because. Especially in the more, uh, I guess, metro caches. Yeah. Which is why I would rather be out in the country or in the woods, for a, more often at least. And I'm totally looking forward to those kind, where it shows yeah. people reaching in knots in a tree right. and pulling out a little cache. There was one we saw that was pretty cool. It was a fake payphone. Yeah. It wasn't even a real payphone because they don't exist anymore. Right. So if you pull up to this area on, you know, you've got a cache on your app and you pull up to this uh, payphone that, it shouldn't be there. And then in this case, there was a color combination of numbers and then a box popped open in the bottom. And I'm assuming the hint on the app would give would, you an would idea, give you an idea the of, the of the numbers or the colors. So you got to realize there's people of all demographics and, um, you know, some people have this, you know, a lot more money than other people, but they're into yes, the same hobby. Exactly. They can put these cool ass caches out there. Right. And I want to do cool ones with cool clues. They're Absolutely. not so easy. I mean, not super hard because you don't want to make you, like you don't want to. I mean, people are out there do it on public property. You don't want to have them climbing trees and shit. But at the same time, you know, make it a little difficult. Did I use the right word? Did I say? I meant demographics. Did I say that? Or did yeah, I, you said demographic. Okay, I believe for some reason now I'm back. I'm thinking there's. I thought I said. There's a lot of people from different denominations. <laughs> no, ah! yeah, no, you said demographic. Okay, cool. Yeah, no. <laughs> <Is it demogra> <laughs> you got your Presbyterian, you got your Presbyterian, your Southern Baptist, <laughs> and you <laughs> and your Lutherans. Um, yeah, so they're all into geocaching. But no, we we thought at first I was thinking that. If we talk about this, it'll seem cheesy or whatever, and I'm trying to picture a thumbnail and a title, but for YouTube anyway. Yeah. Because, you know, that's a little different from SoundCloud and all the other ones, but it, it's really cool, and it's 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 a really cool family thing. It is. It, I, my daughter would love this. Um, she was here, and she was. we just kind of ran out real quick, but 
she used to go with me gold panning right a lot when she was younger and she loved the gold panning part she hated to getting out to the gold panning part she had to get into the creeks with woods I mean, she likes camping and stuff, but I mean, we went through some thick ass shit some places, um, in spiders and bugs. But that would be cool. She, she's older now, but that's still something she could ride around with me and do. Yep. On a weekend or whatever, when, she, when she's off work or nothing, whatever. So, um, man, you could go on a full weekend camping in Uori and doing this shit. You could literally get in an RV and travel across the country and do just this, and it would be fun as hell. It, yeah, like and I'm, it's just so much. It's so freeing in the sense of, it's not a computer game. It's not a video game. It's yeah, you're using your phone or GPS device, whatever. Yep. But you're out in the real world seeing cool places, um, yeah. and there's probably a lot of under like cool places that you hadn't seen in your own hometown. I challenge any of you guys listening to pull up that app. Yes, I guarantee you there are ten within a two-mile radius of your Guarantee house. Guarantee it. So go to your app store, whether it's Google Play or you know, or whatever, on uh, an Android device or iTunes, whatever, and look for, just search geocaching. And it's a green app with four different little icons. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. That's the official one from geocaching.com. And it's completely free. You just simply sign up if you want to try it. And I, like you said, I guarantee you, wherever you are, city, country, both, there'll be a shit ton around you. This yeah. has been going on for a while. Again, I knew about it for a long time, but didn't really know the details of it. And I can't believe I didn't because I've been doing this a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Because this is right up my alley. It just fits in with so many things that I like, like camping and gold panning and all that stuff. It does. You, could, you can, because... Like, that's the reason we got into gold panning. Uh, my buddy Baker that you know, James, um, yep. we used to, we go once a year except for the last few years. But we go for a week-long camping trip, and we discovered gold panning because after a week and you're, after a few days fishing and just sitting around the campfire, you want to start doing some hiking and other stuff. So we found gold panning that way. We were like, let's, we were at the mountains one year, and we were like, let's ride up here to Marion, this small town in the mountains, and we came across gem mining. And at the time, Camden was young, and she loved rocks. She collected gems. So we stopped by this little gem mining place where you do the sifting with the water, right? And I brought her a big bag of, like, different cool color gems and rocks. And while we were there, though, the other side, there was gold pan. And I'm like, hey, I've always wanted to try that. I remember being a kid and going to Reed's Gold Mine. Yep. And, you know, you, do, you can pay $5 and get a pan of dirt. And I don't remember finding anything. But I did that there. We got a whole. We bought a whole bucket a piece, a whole bucket, which took us forever with a manual pan because we had no idea how to do it yeah. at the time. Learned real quick. But uh, after that, every year we started taking our own pans and shovels and going down to the creeks and doing it the real way, and not buying dirt. And that's how I got into gold panning. And you're doing all this hiking. You're seeing beautiful waterfalls, um, old caves mine entrances and you're getting into the gpa and finding out about the history it's really cool and the geologic aspect of it yes i remember when you took me you were talking about you know dry creeks and uh you know look, ancient look river at, beds yeah and, look at how the uh land is right here you can tell that this was a used to be a turn in a creek at one time and you know over time the the creeks change courses yes well you you're left with this dry creek riverbed and those, you know, these are spots that I mean, you 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 turn into a like a, a an amateur uh, geologist. You do, you do. You learn not only about prospector the rocks and the the minerals, but how to read land and creeks. And yeah, you can the see topography. The, exactly. You can see old riverbeds. You're looking for that round, washed rock somewhere where there's no water. Yeah. Um. And you know things like that. And then of and course, I was fascinated by all that. Yeah. And the history of the area too, because in Uori specifically, it's a gold mine. Literally, there was mine. There were mines everywhere. There's a mine shaft right across from the place that I took you. Yep. I it, remember that. You can be 150 degrees outside, which it was a lot of times, but you can go stand in the edge of this little mine shaft, and it's 50 degrees all year long. It's like air conditioning blowing out of the fucking mountain, yeah. literally. And I remember on the way that long ass hike out there to that spot, you were showing me like those quartz, you know, piles where people had been mining in the past. 
Yes. Those, those deposits had been and laying the, there yeah, where people because had been mining for you years. You can tell that that's not a natural formation. Yes. That's where there was old dump dumping from right. actual mining. So all this is fun. I mean, just getting out, seeing nature and learning things like this. And then along the way, little treasures. Are you kidding me? Right. And, and it's just little trinkets and stuff. And the bigger, you know, we hadn't experienced any bigger ones yet, but you can do anything you want. You can create your own. You can make them as hard or as easy as you want. You can put in there what you want. You can do the, the trackables. I think yes. that'd be very cool to it's have something idea. that you say, okay, I want this to make it from North Carolina to California. Yes. And, and it will eventually. And it will. There's so many people doing it. I don't think a lot of people talk about it. No, obviously. Uh, they don't. I mean, I, obviously there's some YouTube videos out there, but so but, somebody would find that and they would move it, you know, maybe over to eventually it makes its way, to, you know, just even just a couple miles at a time. Right. It makes its way over to Tennessee. And, and then it might it's over, sit in Tennessee for two months. Yeah. And, but it's all documented on that it's app. It's all documented on the app with the tracking thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool. There's really, it's just, you know, in general, hey, you know, bottom line, it's a treasure hunt. And who don't like a treasure hunt? Yeah. And it's, and it's, um, people working together, but, you know, at a pace, at its own pace. Yeah, like, at, your, at your own time. So if I would find your trackable, yes. but I'm heading uh, east, well, I'll think it's cool, but I won't take it. I don't want to fuck up this thing's journey to the West right. Coast. So it's cool uh, how people work together in that sense. Right. I love it, man. Yeah, it's really cool. And I look forward to getting to some some bigger stuff where we can actually swap out some things. I think, like you mentioned, that's a good idea. Like we found, was it two with the bracelet in there? Yep. Uh, so it was just really small. Our first two. Our first two hands. was the same person, yeah. obviously, because it was like their calling card. Yep. It was a little hand-made uh, bracelet, you know, cloth. I guess it was just cotton or something. not sure. Um, and then I took the poker chips, obviously the couldn't put them in anything. So that could be yeah. my little thing or something. Yeah, And I took a stack of baseball cards and I was thinking about putting them in right. there. Right. So then I look forward to really coming up with a box yep. and going and hide my first one. And think about this angle. You don't have to necessarily go somewhere with the intent tent of geocaching right but what if you find yourself in another state and just pull that app out you got a little downtime hey dude that's what i mean 10 geocaches you know, around here and you wait you get to spend time you know not just yeah, sitting and it, staring at your phone all day. right like for know? example we, we you mentioned it earlier i go to cherokee every year and go fishing yep so you know those days that you're out there in cherokee in the mountains the fish aren't biting that well or whatever. They're right. not stocked up. Pull out the app, and there's – I mean, I've already looked, actually. There's a shit ton in the mountains. And now your Cherokee trip is still fruitful. Now I still can go. Now I can not only fish, I can also gamble, and I can go geocaching. Yep. And maybe hide my own while I'm there. Yeah, you actually saw there's one right behind the casino. <laughs> right, there's one right behind the casino. That's like I, I Like we when we went to the casino last time – we drove on that road the back way to get to the parking deck. Yeah. So I know exactly where that fucker is. That's, see? <laughs> that, I, I think this is so cool, guys. It is. It really is. I mean, it sounds, you know, on some level, it sounds, some people might say, oh, this is like, you know, uh, it's cheesy. But we all have seasons, I think. Sure. And so you might think it's cheesy today, but... You you may end up one day going. You know what? Let me let me check into this geocaching thing and find out. Hey, there's something else cool you might like. Yeah, um, and it, because I remember, like I was talking about the uh, the rock club that my mom found. She kind of came across. I thought that was cool. So she was down there. She's by herself. And so when she found this thing and went to this Facebook group and found out what it was, she went out and got some smooth rocks and painted them. And so we sat down there one time. Me and Camden went to visit her, and we painted rocks together. I love that. It was just us sitting around the kitchen table, and then we went out and hid some rocks. And that was cool. And then, it, you know, it somebody finds that little brightly painted rock, like my mom painted one like a ladybug. Yeah. And one like, you know, with beach scenery or whatever. You can do what you want. Um, but somebody finds that, and they go, oh, that's, that's cute. You know, it brightens up their day in some I little tiny it. way. And if they choose, they can go to the – because you write right in a Sharpie or something on the rock, you know, Facebook.com slash whatever club, and they go to it and if they want know, to, if they don't have to. That reminds me. You see dollar bills sometimes where people have put, like, track this dollar. Yes, you've seen that a lot. And go to this website, and, and you can see where all that dollar bill has and been. And you can see on a map with GPS, like, where, you know, because when you 
click the location, it marks it, it tags it. Yeah. This dollar's traveled from Maine to California to North Carolina to Florida. Right. And so that's the idea. Those things exist for a reason. It's not like it's just stupid. That's right. It's it's really neat, I think. And I think that's the, you know, it goes back to, and you know, a lot of these podcasts are really based not on actually the, the content as far as the title or what, you know, the subject, but it's how people think. There's a reason there's a always a treasure hunt or a mystery thing in a, in movies in every novel you read. Right. There's a reason for that. So it, on some level, it's like a primal thing, maybe. I agree. Like and the, how to, cool is it that it, you, there's with every geocache, there is that chance of a conversation with somebody you would have never struck up a conversation with because they're going to say, hey, what are you doing there? You know, I mean, like they might a, like be a two cops in the middle of the night, exactly. At, at That's fucking what I'm Cracker Barrel. <laughs> now you and I have this really cool memory forever. You know, I love building memories. That's one of my big things uh, this past year is uh, building memories. You know, that, yeah. That's so a fun I mean, thing. in fifteen, twenty, well, I mean, hopefully longer than that. Maybe in twenty, thirty years, we're sitting around in and, rocking, and rocking chairs, chairs, and it reminds, or us in our wheelchairs, how or on fun walkers. Is that? You remember that one time at Cracker Barrel, those cops came up and. That motherfucker was a geocacher. Yes, <laughs> I that mean, was hilarious. what are the chances? Yeah, that we drew that cop. Exactly, we could have got some some real assholes. That is so awesome, dude. <laughs> so anyway, I think that wraps it up. I'm, I, I think, uh, but it was just cool. It's cool that we came across it, or you stumbled. I'm not sure exactly. Again, we mentioned a minute ago, we kind of stumbled across it. It's the way everything we do works. It really honestly. is. And then we uh, we said, fuck it. Let's go out on an adventure right now before we talk about it. Let's yep. just not talk about some videos. Let's go experience it for just a minute. So we did five total. One failure, but not really because it's not there. And, uh, and this podcast got better with each stop on that geocache trip. It, it did. Yep. And then when we got back in the car... From the from the uh, Cracker Barrel one, I said you had ha- you took a picture. Yeah, apparently I and did. I, and I said, "Let me see that picture." There's our thumbnail. Yeah, this podcast so see, just got a lot better. Yes, man. <laughs> things so, just have a way of working out. It's so awesome. instead of just coming on here, because we had to in the beginning, right? I mean, we had to say, "All right, here's Geocat. This is what it is." But when you have a story like that to go along with it, it's besides, uh, all right, hey, we we did this thing, we found it, it was cool. No, we about got arrested. Yeah, <laughs> you know, by so. letting it marinate, exactly, it got a lot better. Exactly, and it's been a while since um, we both had that ear perking moment at yes. the same time. That was fun yes. to see that. And you're like, "Let's go now," and I'm like, "Yes, let's do it. It sounds good." <laughs> yeah, let's He's go. like, "Let me warm up the car while I find my toboggan." <laughs> he started digging out flashlight. Here's you a flashlight. I'm like, "Here's you a pen," <laughs> and, it, and it was That's on right. Jack. Exactly. So you know, it was cool. It was really cool. And now I really think this is my new hobby. I'm, I'm I really, th- I really it. think because I'm looking forward to like, like I said, I'll maybe I'll start small. I'll find some kind of metal container that you can seal. Yeah, I got lots of stuff from camp, and I can pull out some of those I don't use, and go do a small one or do a bigger, you know, get bigger, more elaborate, and more elaborate clues, make them a little harder to find. I think it's cool. I'm going to do some too, and then put them on the website. And um, by the way, did you you download the app? Did you sign up? I downloaded it, but I have not done the email so yet. So, just if anybody happens to want to, you know, do this, my name on here is Sith Lord three sixteen. Obviously, that's a Star Wars reference, Sith Lord. I've been using this handle since I, the internet started when in college. I think I started using Sith Lord in nineteen ninety one, online in uh, in, in, <laughs> in fucking old Unix chat rooms. <laughs> so anyway, th- Sith Lord 316, you can message each other on this thing. Um, but yeah, when James, you sign up or yeah. whatever, we'll have your username. And then that, I didn't know what to do. So that's the way I signed it on the little things. I yes, signed it Sith, Sith Lord, Lord and, and James. James. <laughs> and then I put the date. And Because you didn't have a username yeah. yet. So. I'm pretty sure mine will be K-Town Fat Cat. I'm sure that's not taken. Usually yeah, I yeah, yeah. That. That's right. The, hey, there was a K-Town girl. Yeah. There was, it was a yep. number K-Town girl. And that was yep. the t- one that was 10 years old. Yeah. It was, uh, well, 2010, close enough. So, yeah, yeah. So that'll be, yeah, K-Town Fat Cat will probably be his, I'm yep. sure. But, yeah, it only takes just a, two minutes to sign up. But... Yeah, it was cool, man. But anyway, let us know in the comments on YouTube if you've done this. Have you heard of it? Would you try it out? I, I think it's really cool, and uh, it can be for anybody at any age. Yes, it is. That's what's There's cool an adventure waiting on you guys. 
It is. It's it's crazy to think about. I'm excited to go find some little pill bottle with a little trinket in it, but it's really really cool. When you find it, it's really cool. It is. No matter how simple it is, you pull it out and you unroll that little scroll. Yeah. Uh, log. It's like a scroll log. Yeah. At least so in those. Cool I'm feel. sure there are flat ones in the bigger ones and or whatever. And when you mentioned the movie National Treasure, I mean, that's just freaking cool. And that's right. what it feels like. Exactly. And I look forward to the bigger ones where there are more, uh, I guess, they what do they call it? What's the technical term? The to- For the bigger not ones? The, not, I, I keep saying trinkets. It's not loot, but there's oh, some swag. Swag, yeah, yes, swag. That's right. So it's like swag bags. So I look forward to getting some the bigger ones where you can like because they they want you to like you you're welcome to change. You take something and add to it, and you can take something from that swag. That's right. That'd be cool, and then you can you can have you can keep it or you can put it in another one. So I'm, you got a little memory from that little you know that find. I'm so interested to see who listens to this and has been geocaching. I know. I, I am too because it's really, it's probably been going on for probably 15 years. I'll bet you. I'm, I'm at least, to at it. least 15, but if if not longer, I don't, I don't know. But it just shows you that there is this little yearning for some small adventure in life because everybody's kind of stuck at their jobs and that's right. You know, the weekend's coming, what do you do? And so people have hobbies for a reason. Yeah. Get out and walk, breathe some fresh air and yeah. find some treasures. Uh, smell the flowers. Literally. That's right. <laughs> so anyway. Get poison oak. <laughs> yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments on YouTube. And of course this is available on SoundCloud, Google play, iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean. So you can also leave us a comment there, but preferably if you could, please uh, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, and leave us comments there. We read those. Yes. And uh, let us know what you think. And um, if you'll try it, and have you tried it, what's your experiences? Tell us some stories. Tell us some stories of, of some finds you've had. So, anyway, uh, let us know what you think. And uh, I think we're, I think we'll just let it uh, fade to black. Don't taste me, bro. <laughs> that, dude, that dude, I'm telling you, he was like, what the fuck am I out here doing in the cold? I could be sitting in my warm car. Oh, Jesus, man. It was a funny story to almost get arrested at 45. 44. I'm 44. Right. <laughs> Glad we weren't just bad guys. I know. Had anything to hide. Because it would have felt like your pocket. <laughs>